Well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, great to be here. And first of all, let me thank John Cooper, CEO of PW, uh, PTW Energy, for having us at this uh, impressive facility here today, here in Calgary. Folks, Alberta's economic recovery plan is working. Our economy is back on track, and we are in the midst of a boom. This government was elected with a promise to end the previous government's job-killing policies and bring back investment and jobs to Alberta, and we've done just that. Just over three years ago, we received over a million votes from Albertans on the, on the promise of creating jobs, growing the economy, getting pipelines done, and those commitments have been kept. We told the world that Alberta is once again open for business, and employers and investors are listening. Investment is up over last year with over $54 billion of new private sector investment flowing in to create jobs in Alberta. In 2021, last year, Alberta's economy created 130,000 net new jobs, and uh, we've created another uh, about 20,000 in the first three months of this year, and the unemployment rate is now lower than it was when we formed government. In fact, we have the lowest unemployment rate since December of 2018, and that's despite the huge once-in-a-century challenges of COVID, a collapse of the world economy, and the biggest ever collapse of energy prices. So uh, we are once again seeing the, Al the Alberta we remember and love with new investments, great job opportunities, and a balanced provincial budget. We are leading Canada in economic growth. We did so last year. We're leading Canada in growth again this year. And we are projected to lead in growth in 2023 as well. That's why we're on a roll. To maintain our economic recovery in Canada and our leadership of the Canadian economy, we still have to remove some barriers to our continued success. And there are labor shortages in key sectors. We have the people, but increasingly, uh, unfortunately, there are some people who need help learning the skills to qualify for the available work. We need to move people who are unemployed or underemployed into employment in the new jobs that are emerging. We also see many women, younger workers, Indigenous people, new Canadians, and others who are not finding the rewarding roles that they want in Alberta's workforce. There's also an increase in uh, long-term unemployment uh, for many groups as our economy changes uh, to meet the needs of the modern world. So what we need is a made in Alberta solution to include more people in our successful recovery. And we need to help more people learn the skills and flexibility necessary to succeed in today's job market. We need a solution that prepares Albertans for tomorrow's jobs today to ensure Alberta's economic recovery is truly felt across the province. We are investing more than $600 million into meeting the needs of the labor market. We're investing in new training, providing funding to uh, post-secondary institutions, training the unemployed and retraining the underemployed. And this is Alberta at work. Alberta at Work will remove barriers uh, to good jobs for anyone who is underrepresented in the workforce, uh, recently graduated, or who needs to change to a new job. Alberta at Work is a series of programs to help people find work and learn skills while removing barriers to, to employment. Whether you're a newcomer to Alberta, you're uh, returning to work after a long period of unemployment, or uh, you have a disability, we want to make sure that you find a meaningful job in this province. New investments in the uh, Canada-Alberta Job Grant, uh, tr uh, training, for, uh, training for Work and other programs will help get more Albertans working in the jo jobs that help them to reach their full potential. Ministers Madhu, Nicolaides and Luan will share details in a moment. Uh, Alberta at Work builds on our province's strengths, including our world-class K-12 school system, our world-renowned universities and colleges and polytechnics, and our world-leading career employment and income support services. Uh, these programs will ensure that Albertans have meaningful support throughout their careers, and this strategy has five pillars. First is building foundations. 
Now, this area focuses on our K-12 education system and supports Albertans to become lifelong learners. It'll see an expanded focus on STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and math, and the trades, skilled trades. The second area of investment is developing skills. And on this, the, the focus is strengthening the adult learning system through the Alberta 2030 Building Skills for Jobs strategy. It'll include enhancing Indigenous training and expanding the uh, apprenticeship model uh, to more disciplines, more uh, vocations and careers. The third pillar is seeking employment with a focus on those who find themselves out of work and in need of support. Funding will enhance work integrated learning programs and help address barriers to employment like access to tools and equipment. Fourth pillar is advancing your career. And here we're focusing on updating existing skills while acquiring new ones. Funding will support grants and bursaries for low-income students in qualified high-demand programs and skills development. The fifth pillar and the final one is the workforce investment and attraction. And this area will address the challenges of slower population growth and an aging workforce. Funding will attract workers through the Alberta technology and uh, innovation strategy, which will make Alberta an internationally recognized technology and innovation hub. Alberta at Work is this government's innovative solution to create the employment support that Albertans and employers need. Uh, while businesses invest in Alberta in record numbers, we're investing in the hardworking, resilient, and talented people of this province from every background. If you call our province home, we'll help you find the Alberta advantage, your Alberta advantage, and your place in Alberta's success story with a rewarding and meaningful job. Uh, finding a good job is the first step along the path to people's dreams, and Alberta at Work will help you get there. I should also add that in addition to the uh, measures we're announcing today that were funded in this year's balanced budget, we're also continuing with important policy initiatives to, to get people to work at their skill level, including the Fairness for Newcomers Action Plan, about which we held the Premier Summit on Fairness for Newcomers in February, and that's focused on knocking down bureaucratic barriers to, uh, that, that exist, preventing immigrants from getting their skills, credentials, education, and experience recognized. And we're making important progress with the regulatory bodies and employers on getting those new Canadians to work at their skill level. And secondly, we're also knocking down barriers to labour mobility in Canada. The single costliest part of interprovincial trade barriers is on labour mobility restrictions. Well, we brought in legislation last year, the Labor Mobility Act, that more or less automatically recognizes credentials for Canadian uh, professionals and tradespeople from all across the country when they move here. So those are two other important initiatives that we're taking to address what we think will become the single biggest challenge in Alberta's future economy, and that is not enough people for the jobs that will be available. And with that, I will now uh, hand it over to Minister Madhu to tell us uh, more about this exciting strategy. Thank you, Premier Kenny, and good afternoon, everyone. It feels so good uh, to be here with you in this uh, extraordinary manufacturing and fabricating facility. I do want to thank John for his time with us this afternoon. Ever since I started the, my new role as Alberta's Minister of Labor and Immigration, I have been looking for a lasting solution to Alberta's unemployment problems. We see companies moving to Alberta or expanding to create new jobs. And there aren't enough people with the necessary skills to share in Alberta's success. When speaking with people looking for jobs, especially youth, women, and newcomers, I heard that there were still barriers stopping them from getting the job of their dreams. Albertans are some of the most innovative, resourceful people on earth, but I could see that we needed to support their return to work 
to continue Alberta's economic recovery. We needed a game-changing, innovative program to solve these problems. Friends, I am confident that Alberta at Work is that initiative. Whether you are just finishing school, shifting careers due to a changing economy, or trying to return to work after a long break, Alberta at Work will get you the skills and training that you need. We are not only supporting training for the skills that are needed today, but we are making sure Albertans have the ability to adapt and to succeed in the economy of tomorrow. While more and more businesses invest in Alberta, we are investing in the amazing potential of Alberta's workers with the skills development, training, and support programs. It doesn't matter whether you are facing barriers due to being a newcomer, a new graduate, a woman in a non-traditional field, or due to abilities, Alberta at Work would help you find the job you deserve. Part of our support comes from $23 million to continue the Canada Alberta Job Grant. This grant helps employers hire and train Alberta workers and provides them with the skills needed for businesses to grow and diversify. I will help you learn new skills. It will help you learn new skills, whether you are looking for work or currently working. For people facing barriers to success, Alberta at Work is investing a record of $41 million into Alberta's training for work programs. These programs help Albertans who are unemployed or underemployed, as well as those who receive income support. This is not a one-size-fits-all initiative. The options are tailored to fulfill different needs of all Albertans. For some, it's integrated training, guidance for self-employment, or one-on-one -on -one employment services. For others, it is workplace training or immigrant bridging programs. These benefits will help any group that is underrepresented in the workforce, including women, indigenous people, and newcomers to our province. While Alberta's economy grows and diversifies, Alberta at Work would help to grow and diversify our workforce. These initiatives bring a whole new range of career possibilities to Albertans and new possibilities for success and meaningful work. Alberta's economy went through some tough times over the past two years. We all know that. Nobody could have predicted COVID-19 and the economic crash. But Albertans adapted. We worked hard, and Alberta's economy has returned as a driving force in this country. That's how we know that when Albertans face those bumps in their own career path and they are out of work, whether it is due to downsizing, a scale gap, or the changes of the 21st century economy, with your government support, Albertans will quickly recover and thrive. Thank you. I will now ask the Minister of Advanced Education, Mr. Dimitris Nikolaides, to provide his remarks. Thank you so much. Well, fantastic. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, of course, thank you to Premier Kenny and my colleagues, Minister Madhu and Minister Luan, for being here with us today for this important announcement. The Alberta at Work initiative benefits all Albertans, students, employees, and industry partners alike. Over the past two years, excuse me, three years, Alberta's government has been hard at work laying the foundations for economic success. And we are beginning to see now strong signs of economic growth 
in many sectors across the province. To support this momentum, Budget 2022 includes a very strong focus on investing in people. Albertans persevered through the pandemic, and it is our responsibility to ensure that they have clear pathways to successful careers. This responsibility was top of mind as we developed Budget 2022. We knew we had to help more Albertans get back to work and address the province's structural unemployment problem. Guided by these goals, we are proud to develop the Alberta at Work Initiative. The Alberta at Work Initiative is about making strategic investments that will ensure Albertans have the skills and knowledge to get back to work and meet the labour market needs of tomorrow. Over the next three years, Advanced Education will invest $235 million through the Alberta at Work Initiative targeting specific areas and programs that will provide students with clear pathways to fulfilling careers. Details of the investment will be finalized over the coming months, but I'm excited to share with you today at a very high level how this funding will be distributed for the benefit of all Albertans. First and foremost, from this investment, 171 million will be allocated over the next three years to targeted enrollment growth to create 7,000 new post-secondary seats in high demand programs with strong student and labor market demand. There's, this is indeed the largest expansion of seats at post-secondary institutions in several decades. And these programs will support industries that are experiencing massive growth such as finance, healthcare, civil and computer engineering, apprenticeship education, and more. These industries all need a highly skilled workforce. Increasing access to these programs is how Alberta's post-secondary system will help meet that workforce demand and support the growth of our industries. Secondly, we are investing over 30 million to expand apprenticeship programming and over 14 million over three years to create new micro-credential programs and work integrated learning opportunities. The skilled trades are part of our province's great history and the apprenticeship education model has, has as much value as other forms of post-secondary education. With new micro-credentials and additional support for work integrated learning, we are giving Albertans more ways to learn the skills needed to find good paying jobs faster so they can contribute to the economy of tomorrow. And lastly, we are increasing funding to financial supports for Alberta students. With 15 million over three years in new low income bursaries and 12 million in additional funding to existing scholarships. The Alberta at Work Initiative also includes five million to increase access to post-secondary education for Indigenous learners. In our 2020 survey of student loan borrowers, 85% agreed, of students agreed that they would not be able to attend post-secondary without government support. The expansion in student assistance today will ensure more Albertans are able to access post-secondary education and excel. The world has changed a lot, however, since that survey, but what hasn't changed is our firm belief that all Albertans deserve access to post-secondary learning opportunities. By making more financial supports available, we are ensuring that post-secondary education stays accessible to everyone, especially at this critical time in our province. In closing, this substantial new funding for our post-secondary system will help get Albertans back to work by securing Alberta's future. We are equipping students with the skills, knowledge, and competencies they need to succeed in their future careers. Through the Alberta at Work initiative, Albertans will have more opportunities to lead meaningful and prosperous careers while supporting the province's incredible economic recovery. Thank you very much.
And with that, I'm happy to turn the floor over to Minister Luan for some additional remarks. Uh, thank you, Minister uh, Niglades. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today is such an exciting day, uh, a day where we can truly see the light at the end of a dark tunnel that we've been through. The pandemic has caused our province many challenges, but we have also seen many of our burdens set up and take on the challenges and thrive. I am proud to be here to stand with my colleagues and highlight the next steps that we're taking to ensure our burdens have the support they need to get back to work and provide for their families. Many people were forced out of work due to pandemic and now face additional barriers to find jobs. That is why Alberta government is, invest is investing additional 20 million from the Community and Social Services Ministry through Alberta at Work program to help vulnerable Albertans get back to work. This funding will support innovative programs to help Albertans who have been unemployed for a long period and build their skills and get back on their feet. Alberta has gained back all the jobs lost during the pandemic, but people are still struggling to find good jobs and employers are struggling to find workers with the skills that they need. As part of Alberta's recovery plan, we are increasing funding to help more Albertans access support that they need to find a job. The 20 million investment from my ministry will go towards more practical training, such as workplace hazard material information system training, first aid, and some cost covering for equipment and transportation, so that our burdens with barriers can equally access this opportunity. In addition, there are $14 million from our partnership with federal government we will continue to enhance existing career and employment services my ministry provides. Last year, more than 32,000 Albertans benefited from the career and employment support services we provide. This is remarkable achievement, and we are determined to build on that success to make sure that more Albertans can benefit from this economic booming. We'll be working with our partners in the community across Alberta to develop the programs so that our burdens can access that through the fall of this year. We'll also be making targeted investment for people with disabilities to get the skills they need to gain employment as well. We have more announcements coming uh, in the coming weeks. We believe everyone, regardless of their barriers they face, should have the opportunity to build their skills and contributing to their community. Programs like the ones announced today are helping our economic recovery and helping vulnerable Albertans survive. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. Now I'd like to invite uh, John Cooper, CEO of uh, PTW Energy Services, to share his remarks. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you, Premier Kenny. Thank you, honored ministers, for deciding to uh, announce this important uh, program on the soils of PTW. I'd also like to thank Mats and Sandra, my teammates here at PTW, for joining me today. My name is John Cooper. I have the honor of being the Chief Executive Officer of PTW Energy Services. A little bit about PTW. We are a electrical, instrumentational construction steel manufacturing business. We're a service business and we work with over 1,500 employees in Canada and the U.S. with more than half of them working here in the province of Alberta. We serve the energy business, the renewable business, agricultural business and related businesses and we've been doing that for over 30 years. Now PTW is a very proud supporter of supporting youth, training and youth in the trades in the province of Alberta, whether it's through our partnership in careers 
or the registered apprenticeship program that Matt's will be describing to you um, later on. A bit of a fun fact for you, we've had over 118 uh, interns or apprenticeships just like Matt working through this program in the last 15 years. So this program and developing this program is critical to our employment strategy for retaining people and growing in the future. So on behalf of the company, I'm very excited about this program and being announced on our soils. We're also very excited about the tailwinds of industry and economy here in Alberta. There's a bit of a step back in the people of PTW. We're very bright, our future is looking bright, and we're very proud of, of that. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, bring forth to the stage Sandra Souter, the Manager of Indigenous Partnerships at PTW. Thank you, John. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Premier Kenny, honored ministers, for this amazing opportunity to be involved in such an important announcement. I am a proud member of the Careers Board of Directors, as well as John said, Manager of Indigenous Partnerships here at PTW. This announcement comes at a very special time for careers. In just over a month, this organization will be celebrating its 25th anniversary. That's a quarter of a century of connecting Alberta youth to the skills and education needed to be successful in the Alberta economy. Since 1997, Careers, in partnership with schools, has placed nearly 32,000 young people, 32,000, 32,000 young people in paid work-integrated learning internships. These internships, including apprenticeships, provide hands-on experience in a variety of in-demand industries, industries like the skilled trades, information and communications technology, forestry, agriculture, and healthcare. Careers also supports underrepresented groups such as young women and Indigenous youth. Why is this so critical to get Albertans working? We are facing significant workforce gaps in this province, now and in the near future. In skilled trades alone, there will be 45,000 workers needed over the next decade. Innovation is driving the creation of new jobs and the tech sector is becoming in increasingly interwoven with different inter industries, changing the way that we do things. How do we educate youth about where these opportunities are? How do we make sure they aren't wasting valuable years training for something, only to discover it doesn't make them happy or fulfilled? Careers is the answer. Driven by industry, Careers knows where the demand is, where it's greatest, and working in partnership with schools, we are able to bridge that gap between industry and youth. The results speak for themselves. Since Careers was formed, the average age of an apprentice in Alberta has been reduced by a decade. Youth are discovering their passion at a younger age and are ending up in lucrative, in-demand jobs that they love. They are staying here in Alberta, building our economies. Employers are able to train their team from the ground up, create mentorship opportunities, attract and retain more skilled workers to their industry. The hardworking educators in this province are more supported in providing career awareness and experience. Imagine if every high school student took advantage of these opportunities. Think about the benefits to our entire province. Our Premier and the Alberta government know the importance of work-integrated learning, and have provided the resources necessary for careers to implement an aggressive plan to increase the number of internships it facilitates to 6,000 annually by 2024. Continued support from government and industry is critical to reaching that goal. My company, PTW Energy, believes strongly in this model. As you heard from John earlier, 
We have placed more than 118 interns since 2006. One of those interns you're going to meet later today, Matt Skurla, and we're very, very proud of him. We have invested nearly $80,000 plus wages into this program. Maybe you're an employer like PTW. Maybe you're planning for your future, or maybe you're a student with no idea what you want to do in the future with your life. Maybe you're a parent or a caregiver who wants to ensure that your child makes a good choice and lives a fulfilled life. Reach out to careersnextgen.ca because it's not too late for paid internships this summer. And what have you got to lose? Careers is the solution driving Alberta's sustainable workforce, and together we can build a stronger province. Thank you, and I'd like to invite Matt Skurla up, one of our strong provincial contributors. So I'd like to start off by thanking the Premier and his ministers, as well as PTW and Careers for including me in today's announcement. So my name is Matt Skirla. I'm a second year uh, electrical apprentice at PTW here, and I am not a public speaker by any means. So the registered apprenticeship program has been a part of my life since as long as I started thinking about a career. My grandfather, Mel, uh, is one of the four founding members of Careers The Next Generation, and he introduced me to the program when I was in grade 10. My first influence uh, was from my uncle Chris, so I started as a heavy equipment technician actually. And then as I worked my way through my uh, first four months of the program at a small uh, diesel shop in Calgary here, COVID struck and I was a victim of the downturn. After some conversations with my grandfather, we decided to try either electrical or instrumentation out. Through the contacts at uh, Careers, Dan and Steve, I reached out to Jason Nolan at PTW to discuss the various opportunities in both electrical and instrumentation, and decided that per pursuing a career as an electrician was a career path to move forward with. That was a great choice. I started at PTW in May of 2020 and have never looked back. I started in the Calgary Modular Yard, just here, right here, and continued to progress forward. Since that point in time, I've moved on to Calgary's shop. The mentors, those that have helped me along the way are too numerous to name, but my, my guys Dustin, Riley, Pat, Kit, Willie, and Brad have helped me out so much, so thank you guys. My coworkers and managers play and continue to play a huge role in my pursuit of my journeyman certificate as well as my Red Seal. My end goal is to achieve my Red Seal certificate and pursue the mastery as well. Additionally, it is my intention to also complete my instrumentation certification to enhance my education in order to elevate my status and standing in the industry. Thank you to State for the opportunity to uh, pursue my goals and career aspirations. PTW and in part the registered apprenticeship program have provided me with the opportunity to uh, pursue a fulfilling career. The Registered Apprenticeship Program provided me with an opportunity and now it is my choice to continue to pursue this career as an electrician and I could not be happier. The hands-on experience of the program provided me the chance to find my passion, my future career. Thank you. Thank you to all of our speakers. That concludes the formal speaking portion. We're now gonna to move to our media Q&A. So we'll start on the floor here. If any of you have any questions, please go to the media mic and uh, please identify who you are, your outlet, and who you'd like to direct your question to. And we'll go with one question, one follow-up. Go ahead. Hello, Charlotte Dumoulin, Radio-Canada. It's for Premier Kenny. Um, so if you can answer in French and in English, please. So. Uh, if you stay on as a leader of the UCP, what role do you see for Brian Jean in your caucus and your government? You know, we're here talking about one of the most important issues in Alberta, which is getting people back to work after five, six tough years. Uh, that's my focus, not uh, political games. Um, 
anybody who uh, wants to be a uh, contributing positive uh, member of the United Conservative Caucus focused on building a team, uh, getting things done for the province, they're uh, welcome to be in our caucus um, as long as they respect the, uh, the, their colleagues and uh, the democratic decisions of our members. Uh, so my focus again is working with the broader team on continuing uh, to lead Canada in economic growth and job creation. That's why we're here making this announcement today. Um, nous, nous faisons un annonce aujourd'hui essentiel pour le futur de l'économie albertaine. Uh, nous, nous sommes uh, dans une uh, énormément de croissance économique et des emplois, mais il y a toujours uh, certains Albertains qui sont chômeurs ou sous-employés. Et c'est la raison pour laquelle nous mettons l'accent sur le, le futur du travail en Alberta. Ça, c'est mon, mon focus. Et uh, tout le monde, n'importe qui, uh, député, uh, sont uh, bienvenus de travailler avec notre équipe pour avancer les meilleurs intérêts des Albertains. Uh, et moi, uh, je mets l'accent sur uh, le travail acharné de croissance économique uh, par les jeux politiques. Merci. Un autre sujet qui inquiète les Albertains, ce sont les factures d'électricité qui ne cessent de, de grossir. Euh, Qu'est-ce que vous dites aux Albertains qui sont inquiets de voir leurs factures d'électricité grossir comme ça? Oui, certainement. C'est une euh, pression énorme euh, imposée sur les Albertains à cause des, euh, des mauvaises politiques prises par les anciens gouvernements que l'NPD qui ont ajouté milliards de dollars sur le... Euh, les payeurs de, de tarifs de l'électricité avec leur, euh, leur décision d'éliminer euh, toute l'électricité fournie par euh, les, euh, le carbone et euh, la taxe sur le carbone, son augmentation et autres mesures que l'NPD a pris euh, à, à mener vers cette situation. C'est la raison pour laquelle euh, nous avons euh, mis en place un euh, rebais de 150 dollars qui sera sur les factures de toutes les Albertains prochainement. C'est également pourquoi nous avons éliminé euh, la taxe sur les, le sens et pourquoi nous avons mis en place un euh, euh, cap sur le prix de, de gaz à 6,50 dollars. Alors, ils sont les trois mesures avec une valeur euh, annuelle d'environ de, 2 milliards de dollars, qui, se, qui est beaucoup plus généreux que n'importe quel autre gouvernement au Canada. So the question was in English about uh, raising uh, higher electricity prices, and I said that um, this is very frustrating because Alberta's got everything firing in all cylinders economically, and maybe one of the few issues that is going to hold back our economy including businesses like this, is the cost of electricity, but it's also hammering consumers. And uh, this is a real problem. It is the result of a lot of bad decisions that were made by previous governments, including the NDP, that authorized $7.5 billion of new uh, infrastructure for electricity transmission that gets passed on to consumers. They also blew out $1.3 billion in their power purchasing agreement fiasco. Uh, they, uh, in an ideological rush, shut down the cheapest and most reliable form of base load power in our power grid, which was the coal-fired plants. That was billions more. And of course, with Justin Trudeau, they brought in the carbon tax, which also was a tax on electricity. So those four things together have imp put up these, uh, imposed huge costs on people. And that's one of the reasons we're providing for a $150 rebate on people's electricity bills that will be showing up on their bills uh, uh, this spring. We're, we've also put a uh, cap on uh, gas prices uh, for home heating, natural gas at $6.50 a gigajoule, and of course we have uh, suspended the Alberta fuel tax. So altogether these three measures represent about $2 billion of concrete support for Alberta families and employers uh, to help them cope with the cost of inflation. Um, but what the most helpful thing would be for Justin Trudeau uh, to stop with the carbon tax, because that's the biggest driver right now in the cost of electricity and energy more generally. Thank you. We're going to go to the phones. Operator, can you please put through our first caller? Johnson, Post Media. <clears throat> Hi, thanks for taking my questions. This is for Minister Luan, if he's available to comment. Um, 
I'm wondering if the government will be, if your ministry will be adopting all five of the recommendations outlined in the letter from the Office of the Ombudsman regarding what Ryan called the unfairness of the H appeal process. And if so, what, what's the timeline for implementation? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, uh, the answer is yes. For all the five uh, recommendations, uh, we will uh, take them all, accept them, and there will be follow-up on each of one them in the coming weeks. I, I think the uh, ministry has already started preparing from the chair for the appeal panel to respond to many of the specific questions there. So I will make sure uh, every piece of that five recommendation is uh, followed through. Uh, but just give you more background that uh, we finished uh, our review of age program uh, at December last year. With that, there is already quite a few recommendations, actions has been taken to improve the appeal process. Uh, one of the part that I want to uh, make everybody aware is uh, we inherited a uh, messy um, appeal process from the previous government that was driven not by policy, but by activism. Uh, with that, the appeal uh, procedure is chaotic and uh, new information introduced at different times. Uh, it creates a never-ending loop for finding a fairness judgment. Uh, we already took actions, uh, updated the regulation, closed that loop that stopped from uh, introducing new evidence in each of the hearing. Therefore, uh, we open the doors for administration can resolve many of the new issues before they get into the appeal stage. With that, we're hoping it will cut down uh, some of the workload for appeals and make the process more efficient. That was just one more example I'm giving to you. Hope I answered your question. Lisa, do you have a follow-up? Thanks, yeah. So in regards to that regulation governing the age appeals process, it was amended at the beginning of April. Uh, one clause that was added specifies that an appeal panel must not consider any information other than that considered by the director in making the decision that is being appealed. So won't this arbitrarily limit the amount of pertinent information the panel can consider, including oral testimony and new medical information after the appeal process has started? And if, if the idea is to shift more of this work back onto the department to avoid the appeal process, what further support is the department getting to deal with uh, problems before or challenges before they go to the appeal panel? Uh, the uh, reviews, extensive review for the program concluded otherwise. Because when you open up that ongoing loop, you're never able to find some uh, consistency, some clear standard to close uh, the, the appeal process. You will always add new information and start a new problem. That was one of the reasons identified in the uh, uh, consultant's reports that that is a loop we need to close. The intention is to increase uh, transparency, uh, consistency. In order to do that, you need to treat every piece of uh, evidence the same way. You cannot continue evolve in that process. Uh, the goal is to make it easier for people who have uh, different views on how the decision was rendered to get it resolved at the earliest time versus going on for a ever-ending appeal process. Uh, I hope that uh, is the answer that you're looking for. Thank you, Operator. Can you please put through our next caller? Chris Barco, Calgary Herald. Hi, this is a question for the Premier. Premier, you just discussed a little bit uh, a few minutes ago about uh, the natural gas rebate that your government put in place. And uh, just in the last few days, we've seen gas go well above $7 a gigajoule uh, here in Alberta, which is above the $6.50 price rebate level that was put in place by your government. I know that the finance minister had said previously that a price would spike before October that your government would consider bringing in the rebate sooner. Has your government looked at that? Is that something that you were prepared to do? Uh, yes and yes. In fact, the cabinet just made some decisions about this a few hours ago, and uh, we'll be having an announcement uh, about the details shortly, Chris, but uh, we recognize that consumers are struggling with all of the increases in the cost of living, especially energy inflation that drives so much else and that's why uh, we brought in these three measures the cap on gas at 650 the uh, suspension of the fuel tax uh, which is 13 cents per liter and the 150 dollar rebate on electricity so 
uh, altogether on an annualized basis, well, I mean, it depends on how high gas prices go, of course, but if they, if they were to stay in this uh, sort of around $7 a gigajoule or seven fifty, dollars um, and we were to provide this um, rebate for the increment between six fifty dollars and the actual price, well, that's, that'll probably be a few hundred million do more dollars. So altogether, we're roughly talking on an annualized basis about around $2 billion of consumer relief coming from Alberta. And that is uh, way, way more than any other province is providing. The federal government just had a budget. They didn't even address these issues. To the contrary, they confirmed their intention to more than triple the carbon tax, which is the single biggest driver of, um, of, an, of energy inflation. Go ahead with your follow-up, Chris. Yeah, uh, Premier, will it take place in uh, the month of April or May, and will there be a cap on it? I guess, will there be any restrictions in terms of it will only include people on fixed gas price contracts or, uh, or people who are on a floating rate? I guess, how would you structure that, and is there any cap on how much people have to pay out? Well, as I mentioned, uh, Cabinet just made some policy decisions today. The details are being finalized by Treasury Board and Finance, as well as the Department of Energy. Um, so we'll answer all of those questions in the very near future. Uh, so Chris, I, I just can't um, provide answers at, at today uh, as, as the details are being finalized. But uh, given your persistent uh, and uh, good interest on this issue, we'll make sure that you get a full uh, technical briefing on this. And um, thank you. So we'll, we'll get back to you within a few days on this. Thank you. We have time for two more. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Chris Bell, Calgary Sun. Uh, good afternoon, a uh, question and a supplementary for the Premier. Uh, Premier, I, I realize uh, some auto insurance firms, are, speaking of affordability, some auto insurance firms are in fact uh, making some reductions to their rates now, but it appears that they made quite a bit of money in the recent past on, uh, on their insurance premiums. Uh, how can you, and this is a hot button issue, as you are well aware, how can you assure Albertans that uh, they are not going to be gouged by the auto insurance companies, uh, since that would not be the first time in Alberta history that happened? Yeah, thanks, Rick. This is another important part of the uh, cost of living pressure that everybody's facing, and uh, we do know that uh, uh, two and three years ago, the rates uh, went up, but that generally speaking, they're coming down now. Um, the problem we had two, three years back was that a lot of the companies were actually losing money in the Alberta market and they were just pulling out. And they were also imposing restrictions on uh, policyholders that were really tough, like f forcing people to pay up front 100% of the premiums for the year rather than having payment plans. And they were also living in what, limiting what could be covered. Uh, and and people were just ha having a harder time two years ago getting any kind of insurance. And that's partly because the uh, court awards for um, personal injuries had been tracking up quite fast, uh, but there were, the premiums were not going up, and so they were a lot of them were, uh, in fact, two, three years ago, losing money, pulling out of the Alberta market or putting real restrictions. So um, I'm glad to see that, that uh, generally speaking, property and casualty uh, premium rates are now coming down. I hope, to, I hope that continues. And um, th that it will continue. We'll watch it really closely. Uh, all I can say, Rick, is, is um, you know, what we want is a competitive marketplace. And that, that's how the market works. We Albertans believe in markets. We don't believe in socialism. Uh, many other provinces have uh, had the government take over the insurance market. And that hasn't worked out for, for consumers. Um, and it means you only have one choice, um, kind of Soviet style, to go to. In many other provinces, you don't get to shop around and find the right, pre the right policy for you. So that's the alternative. I'm hearing that's where the NDP wants to take the province. I think that would be a disaster. So what we want is more competition, and that hopefully in, in over time will get rates down. Go ahead with your follow-up, Rick. Yes, uh, Premier, with all due respect, I'm an old fart with a six-star driving record, and I cannot find any insurance in Alberta for a guy who doesn't drive very much and has a six-year-old car cheaper than, uh, than uh, let us say, the two provinces to the east of us. But uh, I have not found anything even close. But anyway, gi given that, uh, the NDP keeps bringing up the fact that 
Uh, they brought it up in the legislature, I think the last day they met, that one of your former senior staffers was lobbying for the insurance uh, industry and that somehow this was the reason why uh, things were allowed to get the way they did in terms of uh, insurance premium increases. How do you respond to that sort of allegation or that charge by the official opposition? Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, I think every industry has government relations people that represent their interests. I don't recall ever speaking to a lobbyist about this issue. When I've spoken to insurance companies in the past, it was uh, always about the insurance of the oil sands in the Alberta oil and gas industry, because unfortunately, pressure from the green left was making it difficult for many of our energy companies to get insurance and reinsurance project, uh, uh, products. And uh, so I've met with major global insurance companies to tell them the story about the Canadian uh, environmental responsibility of our energy sector and push back against some of the myths. So that's been my only interface with the insurance industry. And, um, but Rick, as I said, the, what we were in a situation two, three years ago is that more and more Albertans were unable to get any kind of policy. Uh, and they were being forced to, there were very few uh, companies willing to play in the Alberta market uh, and uh, with higher and higher court awards going out for um, uh, personal injuries and uh, and so the, the market was getting totally turned upside down and if that had continued we wouldn't have had companies offering insurance here so um, what we have of course is a regulator and they oversee the requests for rates, and re recently they've been approving rate reductions, and that's good news. Thank you, Premier. Operator, can you please put through our final caller? Rico Emanuel, Western Standard. Hi, my questions are for Premier Kenny. Um, the federal government said today it will continue with mass mandate for national travel after the U.S. dropped its mandate. I'm hoping for your response to this. Do you think the federal mass mandate for national travel is still needed? Was that question about masks? Yeah. Is the federal Okay, sorry, I just didn't quite hear that clearly. Yeah, I don't think it's needed. I, we, Alberta's legislature has called on the federal government in a motion last month to drop all of the uh, COVID-related travel restrictions. We think at this point it's, it's just bad public health theater, not actual public health policy. And, um, you know, most, most of Europe have dropped the mask mandates. Major international carriers have done that. Um, COVID's here. It'll be here the rest of our lives, circulating as a virus. We have to be mindful of that. We um, Individuals should take reasonable precautions based on their risk assessment. Obviously, people who are immunocompromised uh, may want to continue wearing masks, and we should respect those choices. But um, I think... Uh, uh, the global trend is very clear, uh, and, and I hope that Ottawa will will follow that trend sooner than later. You have a follow up, Rachel. Sure. On the UCP leadership review, Brian Jean has said a mail and leadership vote will be rampant with cheating and fraud, a claim your campaign team says is baseless. Uh, last week at a swearing in, Jean said the UCP is playing games with the leadership review because he's never seen membership lists sorted by first names or using paper records. How do you respond to these allegations? Again, the audio here is not super clear uh, with you. I, I think the question is about membership lists and such in the UCP leadership. I would just direct your questions to uh, the Conservative Party that is ministering the vote. Uh, I obviously am not doing that. Um, I'm just glad that every single member will have a chance to uh, express their wishes democratically, safely, and securely in a secure process. It's the same process that the Federal Conservative Party uses to elect their leaders. Uh, it's overseen by an internationally recognized uh, accounting firm, Deloitte, and by an independent um, chief attorney officer. And all of the ballots are, uh, uh, first of all, the identity of people who are voted is all verified before the ballots actually go into the ballot box with a photocopy of government issued uh, identification. And uh, then uh, the ballots are only open in the presence of, of dozens of, of scrutineers. Uh, from different points of view, so I think it's just, uh, 
the best way to hold a wide open democratic vote. Um, it was, it's obvious that to have done so with 20, 25,000 people in a hotel uh, in Red Deer that could accommodate maybe 2,000 would have been a complete gong show. So I, I think the uh, democratically elected board has made a, a sound decision in, in going this route. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our press conference. Thank you.